In this box we have a Stanley 55. In a previous video I had spoken about the Stanley 46 and how it compares to the Stanley 45. And in that video I also mentioned the 55. Well, there's been a couple of questions that need a clearer picture drawn and that needs to be done with the 55 itself. We'll start with the blades. Um, the 55 comes with many more blades than the 45 does. The majority of them are the same. You've got the standard uh, flat rebate uh, planes. You've got your standard cove planes. All of these you also get in the 45. You've got the tongue and groove plane. Um, so there's nothing new here. Uh, you've got angle cuts. This is something that you don't have. These bevel cuts you don't have in the 45. And these multi-level beads you don't have in the 45. And there's a good reason for that. The rounds, they're all there. They're not a problem. The beading planes that are straight, they're all there and that's not a problem. One of the points that I made was about these multi-level beading planes. Now how I described them was I grabbed two um, cove blades from the 45 box and I held them like this, indicating that to be one blade. Unfortunately that confused a few people and said Hey, how do you put two blades in a 45 like that? Uh, that's not possible. The 45 is designed to accept one notch. And there's only room for one blade in a 45. There's no room to put a second one on. But with the 55, you can get blades that do a similar sort of thing as two coves, but at different levels. The reason the 55 can do that is a little feature on the 55 in regards to the skates. And I'll just bring the rest of this out. So we have a couple of fences. I'll just put those aside for now. We have the main body and we have the secondary skate. Now at the moment the main body has standard cove in it. So what we'll do is we'll just remove that one. I'll put that aside. If we want to utilize a multi-level cove or bead, we will align one side so that, I'll try and get a decent picture of this, so that it lines up with the top of the skate. As you would with any other blade. So we'll just drop that in its slot, bring it down, and we'll say we've spent a bit of time lining that up, we've got it all right, we've tightened it up. Now the issue you've got there is you've got this other side that's hanging out really low. With a 45 what will occur with that is that it'll chatter and there's a chance that it will actually cause a breakage. Now with the 55, I'm just going to get this fence or this depth stop out of the road. I'll just remove it. You'll note that it has these slots and what these slots do is enable for the whole mechanism to be screwed with this angle screw at the top up and down those slots enabling this skate to be at a different height to your primary skate. So if we grab a couple of short bars and I just knocked over one of the fences if you're wondering what that thump was we grab a couple of the short bars we slide them in I'll just loosely tighten those down 
just to get enough there to actually demonstrate what we're talking about. Your second skate slides on and all of this is the same as your 45. There's no real difference here. Okay, so we slide it on and we want the skate to just sit over that blade. Now I've got a um, depth stop there that will help but you'll notice that the skates are at a different height. Now in particular if we look at this blade that sits down lower we've got some more room here to move that skate further down. So by screwing the screw we can move that further down and we actually get it so that it is supporting the back of the blade right at the bottom. So as this tip runs into the timber here instead of having an amount of spare blade hanging out in the wind that can chatter backwards and forwards as it tries to dig through the timber causing a weak spot and possibly a breakage of your blade it is supported right to the end by your skate. Now if I turn this all around and we'll just lock this into place a bit so that it won't slide if we spin it around you can see that your two skates are different heights but on both sides the back of the blade is secured by the skate at the point that it's cutting even though they are two different heights the sides of the blades are being supported this gives a better support right across the blade so as it's digging through this timber with the multi-level bead uh, or dual cove multi-level setup it has less ability to chatter less chance to break anything and results in a cleaner cut this is what makes the 55 stand out from the other multi-use planes like the 46 the 45 the 50 they all have skates that are at the same level and can't be adjusted whereas the 55 has that extra mechanism that's on the secondary skate that enables you to adjust the height of the skate other than that the planes function and operate pretty much the same now in that you have a micro adjuster um, which that enables you to adjust that fence with a single screw just a small amount so after you've positioned your fence by bolting it in and locking it onto the rails and you're going to get pretty close to that and if you've got a timber that's actually the right position to butt up against you and push it up lock it in place you're going to be right but this enables you to adjust just slightly that's available on the 45 as well but for those of you with an eagle eye you may have noticed that this fence has a thicker bottom than it has a top it also if you notice the profile has a cove now why is that in place if you look carefully it has a right angle halfway down which locks into this piece here now sitting separately like this it's a little bit hard to tell what is going on there but what is really going on there is on the back side of the fence we've got a couple of screws now if we loosen off those screws just slightly and carefully because we don't want to do any damage to anything and keeping in mind these are old you can't really easily get replacements for stuff once you loosen it off this whole piece can pivot now in this position it is 90 degrees and we'll just move the plane out of the way for a sec so that you can get a better look so in this position it's 90 degrees to the work to the face of the timber and that's the same as your 45 and all the others 
but it has the ability to spin it around to the 45 degree angle. That ability is on both fences. You've got a fence for both sides, which means the plane can now sit on the corner of your timber and act like a 72, in that it can take a chamfer down the side, but not only can it take a chamfer, like the 72, it can also take a bead on the 45 degree angle down the corner of your timber. Now, to do that, the 72, you put the 72 and a half beading attachment on, which is a scratch plate set up, and that takes a bit of time to work through and scratch your detail into the wood. Um, and it is very effective. However, cutting is a lot more quicker than scratching. Scratching gives you an, a, a smoother surface than the cutting does, and is le less likely to give you tear out and things like that. But cutting is a lot quicker. So with the 55, having the fence that can be adjusted to the 45 degree angle like that on both sides and being able to come in on the corner of the timber at a 45 degree angle, um, you can then apply any of these blades as you like. Right from the get-go, you could apply this bead to the corner of the timber. Now, if that's appropriate, if that's what you want, that's capable to be done with the single blade. Whereas a 72, you've got to chamfer it down with a straight blade and then adjust it to the 72 and a half scratching attachment and put the appropriate scratch blade in and work it down that remainder. And you may have to do a couple of different blades or, or work um, in an in a unorthodox way with a number 66 or something like that to finish it off. However, with the 55, you can come straight in with this multi-level beading blade. And there are other blades available that don't come automatically in the box, but the box does come with quite a range of blades. The 55, other than that, is, for all intensive purposes, the same as a 45. It's got your knickers on the skates, it's got your depth stops, it's got the inner depth stop which I removed just previously that sits between the skates. Um, the only difference is that um, you have that skate adjustment realistically. You have a couple of more knobs and a couple of different refinements of how these are all bolted together. So on your rails you've got these collets that screw down and, and uh, work on a, an angled thread, pressing it in place, locking it in place. Um, you've also still got your thumb screws that screw into place to help lock it in place. So you've got a number of different, um, more modern variations to what you have in the 45. Um, for the most part though, everything remains the same. You've still got your splitters, you've still got your um, cam foot, all of that sort of stuff remains the same. None of that changes. You've still got the option of the long bar set as well as the short bar set. This set took me a little while to find uh, in such good condition and so complete um, and at a good price. But in my opinion, it is well worth it. There is very good reason that this is called the king of planes because it does do everything. Um, as, as far as the flexibility that you have with this plane, it gives you flexibility that you have with no other plane. And it's not that hard to set up. You know, it, it doesn't take that long. Um, you've got all the same options that you have with pretty much any other plane outside of the standard um, smoothing leveling jack plane type scenario where obviously you have a wider flat blade than what you've got available here you know this this is your largest blade right here and it's about half the width of what you would get with a number um, two 
through to eight sort of thing you know obviously variations with the different sizes different widths of those plates but um, when you've got your one through to eight and you start looking at the optional extra planes a 55 does cost a bit there's no doubt about that and you can still find them um, certainly incomplete but to find a complete one's a bit harder but you can still find them for a couple of hundred dollars possibly with rust that needs to be uh, removed the boxes may not be in as good shape as this one um, they may look a little bit rougher but they function just as well with a bit of clean up and TLC and the options that you have with the 55 even though the plane itself costs a bit more and can be a little bit more fiddly to set up in some cases it is effectively many other planes all combined yeah you, you can get a 78 plane and do a rabbit and you've got different size blades in the fence etc um, you can do and get a tongue and groove plane that'll cost you more unfortunately because they're a complex and rare little beast in their own right a number 50 can do that a lot cheaper yes um, number 50 can do predominantly what a 78 can do so you can get away with a 50 in most cases but there are a number of things that you can do uh, with a 55 that you can't do with a 50 which will save you having to go out and get something like a 72 which is very expensive and for the most part a lot more expensive than a 55 although it does a fraction of the options so if you are looking at a 55 and wondering whether you should get one and you do 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 bead work um, edge work chamfer work things like that and you do do rebate work then I would say it's well worth considering a 55 the 55 certainly is well well deserving of the title of King of Plains because it just has such a, a huge variability in its capability of what you can do with it um, this one I'm I'm sort of proudest of owning this over many of my other planes and I'm happy to advise others that if they've got the money and they've got got the desire to have one and they've done their research and they they like what they see then absolutely pull the trigger go for it no matter whether you collect or use happy hunting